Hi guys, this is Fazan and welcome to today's session on introduction to algorithms. Now, before I start, can you guys quickly confirm in the chat if I'm audible? Is everything okay? Is my slide deck visible to you guys? Is my uh, are you hearing my voice clearly? If there is no noise, then we can start with this session. Just quickly confirm in the chat, and while we wait for others to join, let me just quickly help you guys to give a quick tour of how Academy looks like. So when you type in your Google Chrome, when you type in Great Learning Academy, therein you will get this first link, right? And this is Great Learning Academy. Just click on it, and then it will redirect you to this page, right? In this, you have some popular courses, right? These are all free courses, and these are popular ones. Digital marketing is there. So you have graphic design, you have Python programming in Hindi that is right now popular. And if you are looking for something that is specifically in IT and software domain, you have courses, information security, data structures, algorithms is there, Java programming is there, fundamentals of Python are there, ethical hacking, front end development, HTML and CSS, blockchain is also available. If you are an, if you are one, if you are one who is uh, happy new year, happy new year, my. So if you are one who is interested in Excel, Excel courses are also there. Now, if you you have some Hindi courses as well, we have Python is there, machine learning, Java, C, C++, React, R, AWS, all these courses are in Hindi. Okay, you guys can check it once you are done, once you have completed these courses, then you can easily get a completion certificate. You just have to answer six questions correctly out of 10, you will get the completion certificate. And if you also are looking for advanced PG programs, those are also available. You guys can check it. If you are looking for software development field, we have courses available on that domain in that domain as well. So now as I can see some yeses. Okay, great. So now let's get started. So today's session is all about algorithms and we'll try to first understand the flowchart, how to write the flowcharts, then we will see pseudocodes, right? These are two basic building blocks, right? These are two basic things, but we are not going to cover these things every time when you are creating an algorithm, but yeah, it is good to know information and you should be able to understand these things. Okay. So because these are connecting, right? So this is the first step. And based on this, you can create a pseudocode. Now, if your pseudocode is clear, then you can easily switch to algorithm. Okay. So we'll see what are these things. Okay. So these are, uh, these are the two building blocks. Then we'll talk about algorithms. Then we will try to understand searching algorithms, then sorting algorithm. And then finally, we will try to cover divide and conquer approach. So this is a one hour session. So that is why we are covering only this much. Although we all know that there is many more things in algorithms that one can think of but yes okay cool so now let's see what is a flow chart do you have any idea regarding it can you guys quickly write in the chat in a single two or three words that's it what is a flow chart it is just a pictorial representation that's it okay of the steps that you need to follow that's it okay so what are the steps that you're going to follow you are going to write it in terms of uh, yes, yes, yes. These are the types of algorithm. We are going to cover those things as well. But yeah, we are just starting Pritesh. Okay. So it is just a pictorial representation. Okay. There are steps uh, that uh, the steps that you need to perform. Okay. It helps us basically these this flow chart will help us to visualize the problem. Okay. So it helps in visualization. Okay. That's it. Okay. If you're trying to visualize this problem, you need to understand the flowchart. Okay, now let me give you an example, a naive example. Let's try to understand that you want to create, yes, pictorial representation. Uh, let's suppose you want to try, you're trying to create a, a, or you want to make a tea. So you will visualize the process. Okay, first thing that you are going to think of, okay, I need to uh, first get up and go into the kitchen, look on, uh, look uh, through the uh, utensils that are there, right? And then we will see, okay, if the utensils are available, then we will see ingredients if they are available or not. So that is how you visualize your problem. And this goes in every each and every case, right? If you're talking about any problem, any problem, let me give you an example of try to sort numbers. First you think, okay, do how, what is the type of numbers? Are those integers? You first, this is a basic step, right? Visualizing your problem. This is the first step that you try to visualize your problem. And this goes for all the real life examples as well, okay? Now it shows clear data flow with the help of arrows. Now we will be using some kind of arrow structure that helps us to, uh, uh, to show the flow that is there. Okay. This is the first step. Then the arrow will help us to show the second step and so on. Okay. And even if you are not uh, technically sound, right? Yes, exactly. Exactly. Dinesh. So even if you are not technically sound, right? And you don't know anything about programming, 
although that is the case right you obviously you should know uh, it's good to know information but yeah you can still create flow charts even if you're not technically sound okay thank you kashyap and finally we will have a definite start and end point now let's try to see what are the pictures that we usually use so this is for the terminal where you write your start and end points okay start and end points you will write here if you're taking any inputs and outputs you will write those inputs and outputs here let's suppose you want to yes uh, square circle presentation exactly you can say that Dinesh yes so processing whatever you are processing let's suppose you are incrementing your x x plus one those things right all the processing that happens we will use this kind of a uh, image right or this kind of a symbol so whatever the decisions right the if statements right if x is greater than 10 then do this okay this is the yes statement if no then do this okay so these things are in this decision uh, this these decisions are represented by this symbol then you have off page connectors let's suppose you have on page connectors let's suppose you are trying to connect two things on a sim same page then you will use on page connectors now if that thing is on a different page let's suppose this is one page that you're seeing and now this is the second page then you will use this off page connector and arrows to represent the flow that's it okay simple okay this is the flow chart and now try to convert your any programs let's suppose you have a program try to find out uh, uh, the largest number between three uh, x y and z right you have three numbers and you try to understand and you try to and you try to figure out the largest number you can easily create that thing okay so now with that being said let's move on to our next step which is pseudocode anything any ideas just write it in the chat i want to make this session as interactive as possible so that is why i'm asking you guys a simple simple questions now just keep writing anything in the chat okay so that i know that you guys are uh, okay sir what is the name of the off page connector so it is the off page connector that you have here right this is the symbol that you you don't have any symbol right you have these symbols right? it's a pentagon like structure right so now what is the pseudocode now if you have your flow chart in place now you whatever you wrote in the pictorial representation flow of process using shapes yes you can say that Mayuk. yeah so now uh, pseudocode is nothing the step by step approach that you follow in here that is in your flow chart now you are going to write those statements in english simple english okay write in english english sentences right so for example create two arrays then store some values in it same right this is the stuff okay that's it so now you have your step-by-step -step approach to the problem and you write it in english okay now this is something that is easily understood by a layman now who is a layman it's a he's a man who doesn't know anything about yes who doesn't know anything about any programming language so he should be able to understand okay let's suppose you have someone from the film industry or a musician or anyone or management he doesn't understand programming so you have to write your algorithm or pseudocode in such a way that he should be able to understand it okay in english that's it right okay you have one array now uh, even if you want to use these words you can okay Okay, even if you have, if you want to use these words, like fancy words, like arrays, loops, you can use it, but it is better to use something that is um, much more uh, language independent. Okay, so uh, anyways, you can, uh, you can, it helps us to write these codes easily, but it is avoided, it can be avoided, right? So now the flow, uh, and it does not follow, right? It does not follow any programming construct, right? So the programming constructs, like your ifs, loops should not be there, just simple English, okay? So it is just mapping flowchart in simple statements. That's it. Okay. General step by step. Yes, exactly. Kashyap serves the documentation purpose and it is used. Obviously, now you might be thinking, sir, why do we need pseudo code when you are in an organization? Therein, you will need to document your code, right? And this pseudo code helps in documentation because even if you are sending it to your stakeholders, right? Or anyone for the, uh, the one who is not uh, technically sound, he should be able to understand, okay, what are you doing in this method or in this function? What are you doing? Okay. Yes. Language dependent, not dependent, Pritesh. Language independent. Okay. Cool. So now then comes the uh, thing wherein you write these things in programming and that are similar to what programming language that is more close to your programming language. Okay. But not the actual programming. Okay. That part is known as algorithm. Now here you will be using some programming constructs like, okay, now I'll be using for loop, right? I will write for this to this. We will use this thing. Okay. For, uh, then I will go write the, like this, right? For I equal for I to, n minus one these are some programming constructs okay 
Okay, so now uh, this is not an actual programming, but it follows the programming constructs to some extent, right? So there will be some programming constructs. Uh, pseudocode helps to explain the com code compiled. Exactly, Mayuk, you can say that. It helps you a lot, even in documentation purposes, all those things, right? It helps you a lot, okay? Then you will try to analyze the time even once you have your algorithm ready. Now, you don't code it directly because that coding process is time consuming and it takes a lot of effort, right? You're not just writing a simple program. Now you're talking about multiple methods, multiple uh, functions that are there and then you want to club them. So that part is a tricky part. Now, before you write your algorithm, you will see, okay, is the time and space complexity efficient in this algorithm? If yes, then you go ahead and code it out. But if not, then you try to optimize it. Okay. That is where you, where your opt is optimization comes into picture. Okay. So you need to understand these algorithms very carefully because this is the thing which helps you to minimize or optimize your code. Okay. Algorithm is used to uh, program step by step. You can say that you can say that, but algorithms is similar to pseudocode. All these things are similar to each other, but there's a small, small difference between these things. Flowchart, obviously flowchart is a pictorial thing. Then comes the pseudocode, which is layman's English term. And same thing you're writing now in algorithm. Now it is more close to your programming language, but not exactly your programming language. Okay. This simple, simple difference, but it is very important that you should keep this in mind. Obviously there are some additional functionalities like in your algorithm, you try to visualize your time and space complexity so that you can do much more. Uh, you can write a code which is very efficient because right now we are in such an era that everyone can solve problems, right? But algorithms, everyone can solve problems, but the most efficient problem or solution is taken into consideration. Why? Because right now we need efficient, optimized code. Okay. So algorithm used in every programming language. Yes, yes, yes. This is such something that is language independent in the form that you don't be, you will not be writing. Okay. C out C and print F system dot out dot print L and print like in Python In Python, you write print in uh, Java, you write system dot out dot print L and in C, you will write print F scan of statements in C plus plus C in C out. It is language independent. You will not be seeing those things in what in your algorithm. But anyways, there are different, different patterns usually people follow, but yes, uh, usually uh, people follow, try, tend to make it close to algorithms, right? Tend to make it close to programming language, but that should, you should not, you should avoid that thing. Okay. It should be something that is uh, independent from your programming language. Okay. Algorithm is used for, yes, 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 yes. For modeling out your thing, trying to find out the optimization of your code and then finally code it because coding is something that is very, uh, you want to, even if you're trying to, uh, yes, code optimization, even if you're uh, trying to solve any problem in your interviews, right? Let's talk about that. You're trying to solve any problem in your interview. You don't straight away go into the code. That is the most naive approach and most hated approach. If your interviewer thinks, okay, if you know, the, if, even if you know the question, right, still try to write an algorithm and then try to communicate this thing to your interview, viewer, interviewer, right? So being an interview, he looks into one thing. Okay. How you're approaching your problem. Are you straight away going into the, into coding? Because that thing is dangerous because you will be wasting your company's time in trying to code something which is not efficient or which is wrong, right? So this is the, these are the steps that you need to follow and keep this thing in mind. Okay. So if everything is clear until this point, then we will start the next thing. How to understand time and space complexity. Sandeep, we will talk about these things. Okay. We don't worry. I will show you some tricks and uh, tips that you should follow in order to calculate or in order to understand time and space complexities. Okay. Don't worry about it. So quickly confirm in the chat, write a yes. If you understand each and everything so that we move, we can move ahead with the session. So these are the things that you should know. Good to know information. And now let's start. Okay. Does algorithm also deal with space complexities? Ah, uh, yes, kind of. If you're writing your algorithm and it is very detailed algorithm, then space and time, everything can be understood, right? So let's suppose you have a problem and you're using, uh, I will give you an example of uh, swapping the numbers. Now you're using extra, uh, you can, you can write, you can code it out and using two variables, but you're using, okay, I will use an extra uh, X, uh, extra Z variable and there I will store some value and then check, uh, then transfer those values into Y. So that is, you can understand the space complexity, right? If you are smart enough, right? And if your algorithm is much more detailed, okay? Cool. Cool. I can see some yeses. Okay, great, great, great. So now let's try to understand the searching algorithm. So this is a simple searching algorithm that we are going to talk about. 
and then there is one more algorithm which follows it helps in competitive programming too yes obviously pragati obviously right it helps you a lot but uh, in your competitive programming when you are going uh, when you are writing these things uh, online or you are taking uh, any competitive programming that is online right therein you don't waste your time in coding you, do, you are not wasting your ca- Uh, time directly coding your problem obviously you will be using some paper and pen and then try to find out the algorithm so that at that time it becomes your backup or homework that you are doing and then directly coding it okay so these things you need to keep in mind so please provide how to write an algorithm yes 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 that's what we are trying to cover in this session okay don't worry which language is simple for algorithm there is no such thing that uh, you can uh, there's a simple language for algorithms obviously now if you want everything to be coded in your own language now you don't want any use any inbuilt functions then you should definitely go for c but that is the most uh, that is not commonly used language when you talk about competitive programming the most commonly used languages are c++ and java if you have a compa- if you want if you want to use either c++ or java if you have a knowledge of java good go with it now if you don't have any knowledge with these two languages you definitely go for c++ because it is much more faster and most of the most of these competitive programmers who are good competitive programmers they use c++ because it is faster as compared to what java and with all the libraries that it has okay algorithm is used in artificial intelligence also yes yes dinesh everywhere you will see these Uh, neural networks and all those algorithms right reinforcement algorithms everywhere you will see those things okay so algorithms play a major role in your uh, programming or even in your whole it and software field okay so now let's see what is a searching algorithm first we are going to talk about linear search briefly cp uh, yes competitive programming yes yes uh, yes sandeep is digital marketing required in any specific branch Uh, so we have a session or two on digital marketing you can get an idea on that as well okay sandeep saran says algorithms are complex and logical one yes kashyap so dinesh says in python language also algorithm is used in python language also algorithm is used so these things right algorithms and data structures these are always there now your syntax will change from language to language okay ai is uh, depend on language and css is faster than other yes uh in that way algorithms also depend on the language as c++ is fast yes it depends yes it depends obviously now if you are coding something and it will say that okay you are using this if some of you have you might have used lead code right in that you will get okay this is the cpu utilization this is the memory utilization and now if you try to code both c in language c and java c++ and java you will see the difference in these utilizations okay okay you will see sometimes the code will not get submitted because you are using java as soon as you will shift to c++ it will get submitted so these things you need to keep in mind and you need to practice a lot but if you don't have any idea regarding these two languages so you should definitely go for c++ in terms of competitive programming now why i am saying java is also used because java has a lot of job opportunities available right so thanks for clearing doubt great learning okay okay so now if you have java now you have many job openings related java developer so this will help there is less job opportunities in terms of c++ so that is why mm, it is up to your preference so if you are if you are trying to strike down two pigeons with a single stone then you should definitely go for java right sir please start algorithms okay okay practice dsa from geeks or okay, geeks and lead code yes so now let's start so uh, linear search so basically what you are doing you this is a linear data structure that means you will be able to move from one location to another in a in a uh, in by following a specific pattern let's suppose you have an array and this is having an address of 100 this will be 104 if it is considered to be the integer size is 4 bytes right then 8 then 12 and then 116 so now you have this array and this will be in a contiguous memory location and you can only move along in a linear fashion that means this then this then this then this then this obviously you can move directly but uh, the whole objective of linear search is that this is the linear uh, when you are trying to deal with uh, any linear data structures at that time you can easily use linear search now let me give you an example wherein you have this array and you are trying to find out 6 let's suppose now you are doing uh, you are going to search linearly right so first you will see okay is this element 6 now you are finding let's suppose you are finding 
now and you have 10 20 6 then 30 then 50 now you will check okay is this the element that i'm looking for no is this the element that i'm looking for no is this the element that i'm looking for no is this is this no so once at the once you are at the end you will find your element so this is the whole objective of a linear search that's it okay it checks each and every element uh, for the element to be searched okay since this is done in linear fashion it is termed as linear search simple what is a linear search done now what is the algorithm that you might be predicting it right linear search for the array elements uh, yes 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 array of element now you see the algorithm that i have written it is much more uh, not a it is not completely dependent on any programming language right uh, okay we have some questions okay regards from mexico okay uh, so what are the steps to learn algorithms uh, how to learn them okay okay cool i am com i completed i uh, have completed cpp that is uh, okay c plus plus go for java or python which one so justin it is up uh, up to you if you're uh, if you're uh, if you have completed c plus plus then python is most commonly used as compared to what java right so it is uh, in at, at now right now in 2021 it is the trending language that is there so you should definitely go for python now if you're looking for something that is competitive programming you're interested in cp that is competitive programming you should definitely go for cpp you should definitely go for uh, with, uh, definitely go with c plus plus and code out the problems that are there in geeks for geeks and lead code okay with that thing done let's continue mm, let's erase this okay so now if you see we have this method that is written linear search and we have an array and then there's an item right for each element in the array we are checking if that item that this is the item that we are looking for this is the key that we are looking for okay okay this is the key that we are looking for and we will search this item that is the item there that okay we will check okay is this key equal to the element that is present in the array no okay continue then we will check one by one first step second step third step we are checking we're checking and at the last we find out okay key is equal to element at that time we will return its index right so if there is a case wherein you will not be able to find this key okay now at the end you don't you are not able to find the element at that time you will be returning minus one which indicates that okay the element that you are trying to find is not present in your array simply return minus one now you might be thinking okay sir let's suppose you have your this array and indexing starts from zero indexing starts from zero now if i'm telling i'm i'm sending the index four that means uh, i might be thinking okay this is the fourth element in the array then you can change your uh, algorithm accordingly you can send index plus one at that time sir okay at that time you can send index plus one and then you can print out sop the statement that in the algorithm right in the uh, when you are uh, talking about any specific language at that time what you will do sop and print out index plus one or you can send it here index and then when, once you have received this index you can just print out okay the element that we were trying to find is at index plus one that is is the fifth element in the array that is your this element that is the end element okay in an effective way sir how to st how to start learning algorithms so definitely you first thing that uh, in order to understand algorithms you should be able to understand any language so first thing is language pick a language the second step is then go for data structures okay so data structures need, you need to understand data structures and only then you shift to algorithms so this is the step this is the short and crisp step steps that you need to follow okay first language then data structures then algorithms okay because in algorithms you will be using these data structures very much okay then you should be able to understand which data structure to use which is the efficient data structure hash set hash ta hash hash tables uh, strings which data data structure should you use should you go for bst should you go for bt anything like that okay cool so now let's move on to the demonstration okay so now you're searching for 20 okay this is a simple algorithm right so this is you're searching for 20 now the first step will be okay you will check is 20 equal to 23 no is 20 equal to 10 no is 20 equal to 16 no is 20 equal to 11 no is 20 equal to 20 yes so you see at fourth in the fourth iteration that is one two three in the fifth iteration you are finding your you're finding your element you found your element okay now this is the this is one more uh, this there's a one more catch in this so when once you are traversing you have n elements that is n is equal to 5 you are traversing 5 times so you can easily depict what is its time complexity okay this is a one uh, simple approach then you can find 
for uh, this is simple approach that one can think of when you're dealing with time and space complexity okay so space is simple space is whenever you are not using any extra memory in terms of arrays or hash tables or strings and you're using the entire memory okay let's suppose you have this array and you're using one extra array in order to store these elements then the space complexity will be big of n in this case we are not using any extra memory so the space complexity is constant but what about time complexity if you see you have n equal to 5 that is number of elements and you are iterating 5 times 1 2 3 4 and 5 so you can easily depict okay the time complexity of this thing is n okay so the time complexity is n okay cool so mayuk says can you just repeat the previous slide okay so there is nothing in it in it mayuk so we are talking about linear search okay so you have this array in here and you have item this is the key that you're trying to find for each element you will be traversing one by one and then sure sure melvin sure sure melvin we will talk about those things as well we have uh, in this session we have some sorting algorithms therein we will talk about these things more okay so this is just to give you an intuition and get you guys started okay so now you will traverse for each element then you will be checking your item with the element if you found out you will return the index else you will be returning minus one simple okay good so now let's move on to the implementation so implementation is simple that obviously you are returning something that is either you are returning index or you are returning minus one so the return type should be int okay the language that i'm right now using uh, is java okay so you might be thinking okay what i'm using which language i'm using i'm using java so you have this integer array and you have the target element that you're trying to find out okay then what you are doing you are calculating the length of the array this is the function that dot length is the uh, function that we use for calculating the length okay done the length has been calculated now what we will do we'll traverse from 0 to n that means 0 1 2 3 4 up to n minus 1 will be traversing uh, and so on to n minus 1 from 0 will traverse to n minus 1 okay now what we'll be trying to do we are trying to traverse each element that is a r r of i that means any particular element that this time it is 0 so 0th element will be compared with the target element which is 60 let's suppose we are trying to find 60 right in this case we are trying to find 20 okay let me just replace everything so now this is your target element and this is your first element this is your a r r of i right and you're checking it with target element okay that's what we are doing over here okay so if you found out that this is the element you will be returning and there is no point of going ahead right now you might be thinking right sure sure damodar sure damodar greedy is quite simple you don't worry about it i will uh, in this session if i get tried um, some time i will explain you what how to approach a greedy problem okay how to approach those things okay so now you might be thinking, okay, sir, what, what, what if, what if, what if I'm trying to find a 10 and that uh, element 10, I found it at the first place, right? And I will not traverse because this is the function that I'm writing here. This is the loop I'm writing here and I'm then, I'm then returning it. I'm not moving ahead in the array. So will that at that time will be the, uh, will be go of n, will it, will this be its time complexity? No, this will not be its time complexity because this is the case wherein we are talking about best case that you found your element at the first place this is known as the best case okay and this is constant because this takes only single operation right single unit of time is required and this is your best case so this is what is known as best case which is big o of one and if you talk about worst case wherein you have your element at the end at that time you're traversing through the array and at that time you're talking about big o of n now there is one more important thing that whenever you're talking about time complexity you always talk about worst case because you never know what the input is right what uh, if what if you're trying to find for the first element what if you are finding for the last element you should your time complexity is always dealt with the worst case okay so the best case is obviously big o of one that we talked about the average case means that you're traversing n by two times so this two is something that is constant and we remove all those things so uh, there are uh, oh, any tips and tricks for solving dsa problems yes how many days we need to spend okay always love to watch these sessions from great learning so what is the time complexity yeah already discussed in intro lecture is it's intro lecture yes 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 praveen yes it is an intro lecture on algorithms okay so now what if uh, this two this is a constant so whenever you are dealing with these constants these are negotiable or you can you can neglect these things so that is why it is still n by n the time complexity is still n okay 
and what about the worst case so you talked about at the end you will be finding your element so this is your worst case okay so now this is all about the linear search time complexity and now you're not using any auxiliary space or extra memory yes yes so you're not using any auxiliary memory so the time complexity will be big of one simple that's it okay done so now what about these things what about this thing okay let's suppose let's suppose let me give you a quick intro about time complexity as well okay so you can check the career side okay you have great learning and type in great learning careers and therein you will get all those things okay so I, why we ignore constants okay Gaurav that is what I'm talking about okay so now let's suppose you have one program in this program you are uh, you have a for loop that try uh, that is traversed n times that means you are traversing n times it from 0 to n so the time complexity will be n in that same program you have another for loop and you have a for loop and in this for loop you are traversing from 0 to n and there is a nested situation wherein you are again traversing from 0 to n okay so now in this case what will be the time complexity it will be order of n square why because this is a nested condition that means for every 0 you are traversing n times for 1 you are traversing n times for n you will be traversing n times so you have a time complexity of big O of n square so now what you will be thinking okay this is a situation where we usually try to find out m this is the m and this is your n so this is the condition wherein you are finding m plus n so m plus n and in that case what you will be doing you will be trying to think of okay this is big o of n plus big o of n square so this is the time complexity but usually what you see in your uh, in most of the cases that you tend to neglect this big o of n why now that is the case because let me give an example here so you tend to neglect this big o of n now this was the case where uh, let me just put it this was the case where you are doing m plus n and this was the case this was the case where you are doing m into n that means one complexity is big o of n and inside that big o, uh, again there is a big o of n so the total time complexity is big o of n square so in this case right so now what about this why we neglected this big o of n now that is the case right sir please tell us about blogging spoken okay sir can you provide series on okay sure sure we can do that okay sir can you please explain the average case yes sure sure Mayukcha, that i will also explain okay so now what happens over here so maybe after this it will be clear for most of you okay so now in this case big o of n plus big o of n square now as soon as our n is maybe million million okay or 10 million okay so at that time we are talking about 10 million into 10 million and this will be only 10 million so as soon as our input changes or input is maximized or there is a lot of input these smaller terms like n n by 2 log n all these smaller terms are neglected we only focus on the bigger terms that is multiplying 10 million with 10 million so that is the reason and even if you have some constants let's suppose you have for uh, you have another for loop from 0 to n so you will get big o of n plus big o of n so it will be two or two times big o of n right so this two is also ignored because this will be constant no matter what is here right so these constant terms and these smaller terms are neglected when you are talking about time complexity same thing happens in the average case when you are dividing it by two that means you are traversing only half the array at that time these two this two can be ignored because uh, as soon as your as soon as your input is let's suppose 100 at that time you're still traversing 50 times okay so which is obviously when you're when you're neglecting this too it doesn't make any sense now you're talking about 10 million you are still you are still going through 5 million elements right at that time so you are trying to uh, you're trying to keep the maximum you're trying to optimize it uh, in terms of you're neglecting the smaller terms okay that is the whole objective of here here that is the whole objective that you try to tend uh, tend to ignore these constant terms because no matter how your input changes this three won't be effective okay this two times n will not be effective okay so this is all about yours uh, uh, can we solve it in more optimized way yes obviously obviously now that is something so constants are ignored yes 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 my so obviously you have this now linear array now now you are trying to solve one by one you are trying to find out elements okay now let's suppose you have this array and obviously uh, there are some constraints that you have in place when you're talking when you're trying to optimize this so you there is something known as binary search okay that operates when your array and this follows a paradigm of divide and conquer 
What do you mean by that? You will be dividing your problems into further sub problems. Let's suppose you have the six elements. Now you are finding for five. You are trying to find for five. Will that be the case that it will be from this side? No, because this is three and three is obviously less than five and we are looking for five. So obviously we will deal with this part. So you are dividing your problem. Then you have again three elements. Then you will be dividing it into further. Can four be the element? Can we see, look at this element? No, because this is less than. So every time you will be dividing your problem into further sub problems that is known as your divide and conquer paradigm. So now there is one constraint when you can apply binary search that it should follow some structure. Obviously one simple way is that array should be sorted because only then you can neglect some elements and then focus on the rest, right? But that is not the case always. You can apply binary search even for array, even in an array where in that array is not sorted, okay? So I'm going into uh, a little bit complex situations wherein you can apply binary search. Now that is a different, uh, uh, what different session that will be taking on binary search wherein we will be talking about all of its cases okay how to use it where to use it and and how does it follow divide and conquer approach okay so now here uh, let's try to focus on that this is the algorithm for linear search and it is done so now let's try to uh, cover a simple algorithm that is the sorting algorithms that we have obviously we'll be talking about some simple sorting algorithms and finally i will be talking about some complex algorithms as well okay so we don't have that much time it is a only one hour session and i want you guys not to be scared of algorithms but i want you guys to fall in love fair or let's suppose i want you guys to love algorithms okay so that is the main objective of this session that you should you guys should understand okay this is the thing that i can do it okay uh, what will be the complexity of binary search in that case when you are trying to let's suppose when you have such situation wherein uh, you have you are dividing your algorithm you are dividing your search space every time by two so first time it was n the next time it was n by 2, the next time it was n by 4, the next time it was n by 8. So every time you are dividing your search space. So now first time it was 8, then next time you are talking about 2 elements, uh, 4 elements, then 2 elements, then 1 element. Okay. So now you are only traversing 3 times considering and we are not considering the first case because we didn't check anything on that array. Okay. So you are only traversing 3 times in the entire loop. That means you have a for loop which is traversing only 3 times. right? So that is the case. Now, if you observe carefully, what is the log to the base two and you have some n here, okay? So this n, in this case, you have eight elements. So log two, log eight to the base two, what is the value of this? What is the value of log two, uh, to, uh, log eight to the base two? It is nothing but, let's suppose uh, you know a little bit about, I assume that you know a little bit about log logarithmic series, okay? And I'm not going into the series, okay? I'm, I'll tell you a trick, okay? So now what will be the value of this? It will be something that log 2, 2 to the raised power 3, right? I can write this 8 in this term. Now this is nothing but log m to uh, raised power n. So it can be written as 3 log m into n, right? Log 2 to the base 2. This can be written as this. And this is something that is equal to 1. When you have the base and the number as same, so it will be 3. So you are traversing 3 times, okay? Here if you see, I traverse only 3 times, 4, 2 and 1. So you can easily depict the time complexity of binary search is log n. Okay. You're only traversing three times. Okay. Yes, exactly. My. Okay. So now that will be the time complexity of binary search. You can easily calculate these things. I will talk about these in more in, in coming sessions as well. Okay. So now let's talk about this sorting algorithm. So the most simple sorting algorithm is bubble sort. Okay. So uh, like a bubble, like uh, let's suppose you have you are in the pool and like uh, if you see, if you might have observed, you have a bubble and that bubble slightly, slightly moves up and then bursts down. Okay. So that is the thing. That is how we approach this bubble sort. So it is one of the easiest and brute force. Brute force means that you're not applying any brains. You're directly just solving. Let's suppose I told you to give me uh, can you explain? Yes, yes, Damundar. Uh, that is one of the uh, uh, one of the problems. Therein, you also have one kind of a uh, what uh, one kind of a what uh, technique that you can solve that recursive staircase problem easily. Therein, you do you don't need to understand anything. You just need to understand what factorial. That's it. Okay, just need to understand the Fibonacci series. That's it. You can see that Fibonacci and factorial. You have a ton of questions that one can think of and those can be solved easily 
So what is the characteristics of algorithms? These algorithms, now, if you talk about characteristics, now, obviously, now one of the characteristics is that you can think of these algorithms as the guy who will save your, who can make your programs efficient in terms of time and space, right? That is one of the characteristics. And this algorithms help you to understand the data structures. Now, which data structure to use and which data structure not to use, okay? Now, if I'm using array and if I'm using hash set, obviously I will go for hash set because the time and space complexity to find an element in hash set is less as compared to array. So those things will help only when your algorithm is strong, when you have a strong hold on your algorithms, when you know which data structure to use. And these follow in kind of a, uh, that you can say that these are some, these are correlated terms, data structures and algorithms that these follow along uh, in a similar fashion. Okay. What is the use of algorithms for software development? Obviously, when you're writing anything, you should be able to know what you're writing and what is the time and space, how much memory you are using how much space you are using, how much uh, time you are using in solving this problem. Time is money, right? And if you are using, if, if even if your algorithm is 30 seconds uh, less, uh, 30 seconds slower than the algorithm that someone else built. Now those 30 seconds is obviously dependent on your cost. You are using the sources of your company, right? And you can easily, right? Okay, he can easily depict that. Okay, this is not the algorithm that I'm using because this will take much more resources of your company. Now these are the things that you should focus on, right? So this makes sense to you guys. Now if 30 seconds means 3 million, right? Now you will not be wasting 3 million of your company, right? Right. Okay, sir, what is the difference between big O, Omega and okay, so these things are, uh, I told you, right, the best cases, the worst case and so worst case is nothing but your big O notation. When you talk about best case, which is nothing but your Omega notation. And then there you have theta notation, which is nothing but your uh, average cases. And we never talk about these two cases. I told you why. Okay, so now let's continue. Okay. Okay, so now you have your bubble sort in place and you will, uh, let me just change the color. Okay, now this is a brute force algorithm, right? It is uh, some, it is one kind of a sorting algorithm wherein you will be sorting your elements in either in ascending order or descending order. Now, why is sorting required? That is a different thing, right? Because if you, let's suppose you have some uh, set of, uh, you have a situation wherein people will come randomly, but you want to sort them in terms of the time they have arrived so that you can easily allocate memory to them, allocate resources to them. Now, if you think about this as in operating in terms of operating system, you have number of requests, right? You have a lot of requests that are there. Now you want to, you have also with those requests, you have the number of resources that those requests need. Right? Suppose you have n number of requests and with those requests you have the resources that are the uh, that are required for each of these resources to solve that problem okay so this resource requires uh, this request requires three resources this requires three and so on okay now you want to give the uh, you want to allocate cpu time to the request which is taking less number of what resources so you obviously go and sort these things and then allocate uh, cpu and start solving your problem simple approach simple example right makes sense so this is why sorting is required not do not think about okay we just need to arrange this thing and that thing but think about a larger picture of these things right you have resources you have n number of resources with those resources you need to allocate two three or four four uh, not a request you have n number of requests and with those you have some resources that the those uh, those will occupy resource some resources now you will sort them and allocate cpu okay that's it so every time element is compared and with each and every element it is compared so there you have an element okay this is let's suppose you have 10 and it will be compared with all the elements okay it will be compared with all the elements that are there so this is a comparison of this is this is what happens in bubble sort we are comparing it with all the elements and if it is less than, then it will remain there. But if it is greater than, then we will swap that element with this. Okay. If it is that, if that element is greater than, let's suppose you have 10, then you have 20 over here. Then you have, uh, in the, let me take an example again, or let me try to cover this in, in the algorithm part. Okay. So you have this, basically you are trying to, then you will be swapping and you will be using a nested loop. Now let's talk about algorithm, then things will be clear. Okay. So now let's suppose you have an array, right? And this is your array. You have 10, then you have 20, then you have five, then you have, uh, what, uh, six, then you have seven and that's it. Okay. So now 
you will be comparing you see the first for loop that travels from 0 to n right this is your algorithm that traverses from 0 to n and the second also travels from 0 to n okay so now what you will be doing you will be comparing obviously in this loop right this is the for this is the outer loop and you are talking about this element okay so now what you are doing you are comparing this 10 with each and every element okay so you are comparing it with itself okay you will do nothing okay move ahead because j and j plus 1 are compared so 10 is compared with this 10 plus 1 that is this is 0 1 2 3 4 okay so 10 will be compared with 20 okay 10 is less than do nothing 10 is 10 will be compared with this okay this is less than then swap these things okay swap these things swap the 5 and here you have 10 now 10 will be compared with 6 okay swap these things okay so again swapping again swapping okay so this swapping will happen unless and until you find out the uh, order that is there okay pdf link is not working okay that will be reshared don't worry will you explain sorted square uh, to uh, will you explain sorted squared array to sure that can be done damodar don't worry about it so this is the algorithm this is a simple algorithm that one can think of now let's try to demonstrate it how things will work and you will get a better picture so now let's suppose you have this 23 right so now this 23 is greater right now you're going to show a big oh and uh, all those uh, asymptoting analysis uh khalid uh, not in this session but yeah i will give you a little bit of intuition regarding that okay so you have this 10 you compare it with 10 do nothing okay you have this uh 16 this is again lesser than that okay now let me just put it again so now what you will do you have these two for loops in place right so let me just so you have this 23 now you are comparing with 10 so what is obviously 10 is less than what you did you swap these two things okay now what you did you compared this 23 with 16 okay again you did a swap you compared this 23 with 11 again you do it a swap okay you compare this with 23 again you did a swap so swapping will be this will be 20 and at the end this will be 23 so with each iteration this is your first iteration after this first iteration your 23 is at its original location so now you will not be focusing on this now you will be thinking okay this part is sorted now i will focus on this part only okay so again the same process starts now you will be dealing with this zero okay again this the second element will be there and now you'll be comparing all the elements one by one in the second iteration this element will be fixed and you will be you will be thinking okay this part is sorted now i have to fix on i have to put my focus on these elements okay so time and space complexity sir bubble sort is n square and n uh yes okay so now next time what happens okay this part is sorted we'll focus on this this part is sorted we'll focus on this and finally we have the sorted array so like a bubble every time we are avoiding the last element okay so in first iteration this last element will not talk about it in the next iteration in the next iteration we'll talk about these two elements and we'll not talk about these two elements we'll focus on this so similarly these two happens in the first two iteration and similarly we follow so now let's quickly look at the implementation so if you observe carefully what we have over here we have the outer loop which is traversing from 0 to n that means you have your time complexity as big o of n but this for loop is inside this loop right so you have a nested condition over here so obviously now if you see if you observe carefully this is also traversing in the worst case it will be traversing to the size minus one so this is traversing from zero to n minus one minus one okay n minus one minus one because first time uh, this size will be at this point of time the size uh, the i is zero so you will not be take this is a zero and now it will be n minus one so apart from the uh, this will traverse from 0 to n minus 1 okay so in the world and now we'll neglect these terms so it will be traversing the outer loop is traversing from 0 to n and skipping the neg the constants and it will be also traversing from 0 to n so the whole time complexity of this thing is big o of n square in worst case okay so how program parallel programming so how to program parallel programming so you need to think about it malvin so parallel programming is something wherein you can execute two things concurrently okay so uh, the simple example is that uh, let's talk about any editor right if you have one editor and in that you will see okay this is the thing that some you're writing something now there are some things that are going in the background with the text that you're writing obviously 
first will be the grammar check grammatical mistakes that will be checked in previous the uh, in the background those things will be checked the sentence making the phrase phrasing that you are doing is that correct grammarly checks a ton of things tons of things right so it will check if this sentence is that your writing is not rude it should be polite if you're writing some uh, letter which is obviously to your seniors right so these things are related to what uh, if you can think of these grammarly or all those things as the uh, simple example of parallel programming okay so therein you have to you need to understand uh, now how to do that you need to you need to have a complete understanding of your operating system you should know how round robin works how uh, first come first serve works all those algorithms right so you should have a complete a uh, great understanding or a solid foundation of those things okay only then you can code something that is in parallel okay so also if you're trying to code this thing in programming language you have some multi-threading that there is one i think that is known as multi-threading you can you can take care of those things as well what is dp so dp is nothing but uh optimization of your memory that's it so you are optimizing your memory uh, that we will talk about obviously we are going to talk about those algorithms as well this is not a algorithm or anything it's a programming paradigm that we talk about it's a programming paradigm okay so you need uh, okay why size i minus one because uh kashyap kashyap uh, in this algorithm now let's try to focus on this again okay so i lost my pointer one second guys yeah so second let me clear it out okay cool so every time i told you let's suppose this is the array right and you have there 10 then you have 20 then you have 30 and let, let me not sort it you have 25 you have then 15 okay let me just clear it out i think this might be visible to you guys then so you have 10 you have 25 then you have 15 then you have 5 you have 20 and then finally you have um, two okay so now let's talk about this for loop so zero the iterator let's put an index zero one two three four and five okay so now our i that is our i uh, iterator that it is on zero and j is also pointing to zero now what are we doing we are travel we are checking if j is greater than j plus one so j is pointing to this right a of j and is this greater than this no it is not greater than this so we'll not execute this thing because only when we will swap if that is greater than it okay so can you please make a session on computers computer ethics okay yeah sure that can be done okay so now what uh what is this this is uh, this is arr of zero that is this element and if this is 25 is 10 greater than 25 no will not execute this for if if block okay then what we are doing we are incrementing our j now what j is pointing to j is now one so j this statement is gone now let me just erase it this is gone this 10 will be as it is uh, the uh, this will be at its own position okay so now what happens we are talking about this 25 and we are comparing it with 15 is 25 greater than 15 yes it is so now we'll be swapping them. This will be 15 and this will be 25. Done. Now we'll be incrementing our J again. Now we'll be comparing this 25 and this 5. Okay. So let me erase these two things. So you need to dry, dry run, uh, do a dry run of these things. Okay. Only then you will understand what is happening. Okay. This is a little bit. Okay. So now you'll be comparing this. Now, is this 15? No, it is not 15. It is 25. Now, 25 and 5 will be compared. And now what we'll be doing, we'll be swapping them. And now you'll be having your 25 here. Similarly, obviously, again, then these two will be compared. Now, J will be 3. And we'll be talking about 3 and 4. Again, these will be compared and we'll be swapping them. You, you will have your 4 here and you have your 25 here. Again, J will be incremented and we are talking about now 25 and this. So, again, this is nothing but this is 5 and this is your 25. Now, uh, is 4 that is is 4 less than uh, this is size minus 1 that is size is 5 and f f this becomes 4 because now we are checking for 1 this is j plus 1 now you need to think about this thing very carefully whenever whenever you are comparing you need to keep this thing in mind okay this is very important thing okay guys so whenever you are comparing whenever you are comparing this j plus 1 
that means you are comparing one element ahead so this is the first reason why i am doing here i minus 1 because i don't want a situation where i am accessing a location which is not assigned this means it had uh, ha if we haven't used this i this minus 1 we will be accessing j plus 1 here right and that j plus 1 will be sixth index which is not present so that would have resulted in error okay you need to understand this thing why i am using this i minus 1 because i am checking one element ahead okay now obviously if i'm checking something ahead i need to reduce the number of iterations that i'm doing because anyways if i'm at this location at this location i will be also checking this element because j this is j this is j plus 1 now next time this will be j and this will be j plus 1 which is not possible and you will get an error or exception that is rightly said by penesar that you will get array index out of bond and i don't want that thing done but what about this i what about this i why i am using this size minus i i am using it because now after this iteration is over after the first iteration is over let me just erase a bit of this thing the mess that is here so this is there this is there one minute guys so you have your five here you have your four here or whatever is it okay so now what is happening so now after this iteration is over you have 10 here you have 15 here you have five here and uh what was here whatever the element was at the end at the end let's focus on the end okay so at the end you have your 25 and this is its original position in the array so in the first iteration i was zero in the second iteration i will be one and now what we'll be doing we'll be traversing size minus i now size minus i is one size is five obviously and i is one and this is minus one that is there that is this i now we'll be only checking elements up to this location and not this because it is already sorted. Is this thing clear? Is this thing clear? Because after each and every iteration, our 25 was fixed and it was its original. This is its original position in the sorted array. And I don't want that thing that it should be traversed again. Okay. It should not be traversed again. And I will be stopping here. So now this I helps me to remove the iteration that iteration that I'm doing. So in the first case, it will be, I will be having 125 at its original position. Then in second case, I will be having 20. So in the second case, I will be traversing only what I equal to two, that is five minus two minus one, only three, uh, only two iterations. That means I will be focusing on only these three elements. Okay. Got it. Okay. Great, great, great. So this is the reason why I'm using this size minus I minus one. So this is for that those elements which I don't want to check. Now there is one thing. What if, what if in the worst case, obviously you guys understand that. Okay, this is the worst. The worst case situation when we talk about its time complexity is big O of n square. But what if, guys? What if I have a situation where this is the case? One, two, three, four, five. I will have again that situation wherein I will be going inside this for loop. Right? I will be going inside this for loop. Because I, even if I have a sorted array, right? Even if I have a sorted array, I will be still going in this for loop and I will have a time complexity of big O of n square, even in my best case. Now, in order to optimize it a little bit, what we can do, we can use a flag variable. Let's suppose we used flag equal to one. And then I will increment that. I will change that flag inside this, uh, in this swapping. This is nothing but swapping. I'm just swapping it near here. Okay. With using a, uh, using a different variable, a temporary variable and I'm swapping it. Okay. Now I will be using one flag variable here and I will be changing it to zero. Then I will be checking. Okay. If flag has been changed. Okay. If flag has been changed to zero, then move ahead else return. That means this is sorted. Now that will reduce my time complexity straight away from big O of N squared to N. Okay. Is this thing clear guys? Is this thing clear to you? If yes, then quickly write in the chat or I will repeat it. Then how I will use this swapping condition because anyways, I will be going through one by one. I will be checking these two elements that is big O of N. Okay. But in this case, what I will be doing, I'll be checking. Okay. I have this flag set. Now I'll be checking I equal to zero. Now, if and only if this flag has been changed, I will move ahead and check all the elements else 
I will go ahead and return it inside here. I will check if flag is zero and then I will straight away break this condition and get out of the loop. Okay. Okay. Let me just repeat this thing. So now what I will be using, I will be using flag equal to zero. Okay. F is equal to zero. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, Shrinivaso says, uh, uh, okay. He says, no, sir. Uh, is this the same thing for all of you guys? Uh, or let me just repeat it uh, real quickly. So you have a situation where in you have one, two, three, four, five. Okay. So now you have your eye, eye pointer pointing to zero, right? Let me just write it. So you have your eye pointer, which is pointing to zero. You have your J, which is pointing to zero and you have your flag or F pointer, which is equal to zero. Okay. Now I'll be checking. Okay. Is this J and it is less than well, its size. Now I'm inside this. Now I'll be checking. I'll be going through all these conditions once. Once I am through this condition, right? Once I have checked all these elements, right? Zero is compared with this. Uh, no, J is compared with these two are compared. Then these two are compared. Then these two are compared. Then these two are compared at the end. Okay. Now once I am through this thing. Okay. Okay. I found out. Okay. This thing has not. I am. I got a situation wherein I was never in this swapping condition. Then once this for loop is over in the first iteration, that is in the first iteration, I checked all the elements. Then once I am out of this for loop, I will use this flag. I will check if flag is still equal to zero. That means this is a sorted array and I will use one thing here. I will, I will update this flag equal to one. If I would have a situation wherein I need swapping. Now I have a situation wherein I don't need this swapping. What I will do, I will straight away break or return from this program. And I will say this is the sorted array done. Our time complexity has reduced in best case to big O of n. This is a, this is known as modified bubble sort. Okay. This is known as modified bubble sort. Uh, no, no, Rohit, not every day, but you will get notifications. Once you have subscribed to our channel, you will get notifications when I'm taking the sessions and when, uh, when the other faculty members or other teammates of mine are taking sessions, you will get notification notification in the community post. Okay. So in the best case, you have, you have big O of N and in average and worst, you already know it is big O of N square. Okay. Done. What about the space complexity? Now you are not using any auxiliary space or any extra memory. So obviously the space complexity will be big of one. Okay. So we are running out of time guys. So this is it from this session. I hope you enjoyed this session and, uh, uh what I'm going to do. So I'm just concluding here, uh, this session and I will see you in the next session. Okay guys. So, okay. Thanks a lot guys. Uh, if you have any questions or if you have any, uh, what, uh, suggestions or anything like that. So do write in the chat. And if you have any, uh, confusion post this session that after this session is uploaded, you can always write us in the comments. Okay. So thank you so much guys. I will conclude this session if you don't have any questions. So I'll be concluding. If you have any questions, just put it in the chat section. Gaurav, uh, it will be notified. Please bring sessions on time and space. Okay. Okay. Raghav, we will do that. No worry. Don't worry. Sir, make a video on how to find time complexity. Okay. Cool. Cool. Kashyap, we will make, we'll make more session on DSA. Okay. No problem. We'll be releasing soon a video on uh, data structures and logarithms. Okay. Plus I will be, uh, we will be soon releasing a, a video on merge sort wherein everything, each and everything will be explained in detailed manner. So you guys can check that as well. Maybe today or tomorrow, tomorrow maybe. Yeah. Okay. If you are interested in learning data structures and algorithms or specifically any language, Java, C, C++, Python, there is always uh, what, uh, the, there are courses, free courses available on our academy. You can check them as well. Okay. So thank you so much guys. Uh, okay, great. Okay. Please winning sessions on complete time. Sure. Sure. Raga. Okay. Thanks a lot guys. So I'll be dropping off from this session. Uh, okay. Cool. Okay. Thanks again. Thanks. Thank you so much guys.